All right, so we've seen how to take PHP and MySQL and interact with the data that's held in the database, um, how to insert it, how to fetch it. Um, but we've done this all through hard coding in the, the actual PHP file. What I want to do now is show you how to use an HTML form to insert data into the database. Okay, and, and this is basically the heart of any web application that has interaction or um, allows you to insert data into a database. So I'm going to go to my htdocs folder and create a new folder. And I'm just going to call this add employee. And we can create our index.php file. Actually, you know what? This is going to be an index. Yeah, actually, this is going to be PHP. I was going to do um, an HTML, but I want to actually do some includes here, and you can't do that in an HTML file. So let's open that up. All right, and let's just get rid of these, paste in some HTML, and we want to access this through our local host. Okay, now let's create a form. So in our body, we'll have an H1, we'll say add employee, and open up a form. Now, now we have to pay attention to the form attributes. The first thing we wanna do is select the method that we're gonna use here. And in PHP, you have glo some, something called global variables. You have post, get, session, um, but post and get refer to ways of transmitting uh, PHP or data, um, and get is usually used in the URL and some query in the URL so you can see the actual data that's being passed. Post, however, is hidden from the user, so it's much more secure, um, and it's usually used when when submitting forms. So we're going to use the method of post. Now the action is going to be where we send the form to to process and that has to be a PHP file. So we're going to send it to a file called process.php. Okay, let's close up our form tags and let's add our labels and inputs. So label Say first name, and then we want an input tag. It's going to be type of text, and you definitely want to have a name because we're going to be able to grab these these values from the name. So let's give it a name of first underscore name. Put a br tag and let's copy that, the label and the input. Do last name. You want to change the name as well. Department. email all right and now we need a submit button say input type is submit value can be add employee okay so let's take a look at our form and it looks pretty ugly um, I just want to add just a tiny bit of styling here I just want to style the labels. Uh, I want to display them in an inline block. And I want to set a width of 100 pixels. Okay, so let's save that. All right, that looks better. Uh, I want to do want to put a little bit of spacing in between here. So let's Let's do a margin bottom of 
five pixels. Ah, uh, 10 pixels. All right, so that looks a lot better. Now this is obviously isn't doing anything. It's actually going to process PHP, but we don't even have that file created. So that's what we want to do next. All right, so this will be process.php. All right, so you remember when we when we created this form, we're using the post method. So everything that we pass in as an input is going to be we're going to be able to access that through the post array. So what I can do here is actually let's print out the post array and we use that we do a dollar sign and underscore and then post in all caps. All right, so let's save that and what it's going to do we're going to fill out these forms I mean these fields and when it goes through it'll show us the post array so let's just say first name we'll just say my name I can't even spell my own last name okay department um, programming alright so now if we submit this information you can see now we have this array we have first name Brad, last name Traversy, department programming, email Brad at Yahoo. So anything we type in there is getting put into this array. So we can use this to grab values. So let's say echo post first name. All right, so let's go back to the form. And if we submit this again, it's saying just Brad because we're printing out the first name of that post array. So anything, the name, okay, the name of an input, in this case, first name, is equivalent to the variable, um, I mean the array value in the post array, okay? Now, what I usually like to do here is put the post variables into um, regular variables. So we'll say first name is equal to post first name. And let me just copy that and we'll do that for all of these. last okay and then we have department email we don't need this last one all right Okay, so we created the variables. All right, so now ultimately what we want to do is we want it, anything we put in these this form, we want to insert into our employees table on our database. So we need to create a database connection. And we need to use that in this file, but I don't want to put all my database connect functions in this file. I just want to include a file. So what I'm going to do Well, I guess first I could do it in the actual file, just to show you. So let me see here. So we're going to create, we're going to connect to the database. You've seen me do this. Uh, MySQL, I connect, and then we need our parameters. So local host, um, then the username. password database name was um, company all right so now all I need to do is 
the if statement, which we'll check and make sure we don't have any errors. This will be connect. Actually, I should have put that up here. If my SQL. Okay, echo. Just say failed to connect. All right, so let's check that out. Um, actually, we need to go to process. All right, so we do have some undefined indexes. That's because the form wasn't submitted, but we're not seeing any database errors, which is what we're looking for. If I did change the password here, and save then we get some errors now I don't want this in this file it just doesn't look good so I'm actually gonna cut this out and I'm gonna go and create a new file called database.php and this will hold our database connection stuff I'll paste that in there save that and then all I need to do is include it. All right, so save that. Okay, so that's fine. These errors are fine because we didn't submit the form. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna create an insert statement and the fields I wanna insert are going to be these variables because these are coming from the form. So we want to say MySQLI query and we want to first put in our connect variable and then our um, query. So we want to insert into employees and then we want to put the, the fields we want to insert, which are first name, last name, department, and email. And we want the values. And the values are going to be these variable names but we want to put quotes around them because they're treated as strings like the first name is going to be a string so still put the quotes last name department and email all right I'm sorry that's yeah All right, so that looks good. Let's save this. Let's reload our form and let's put in just some um, random info. We'll say Heather um, Smith department can be design, email hsmith at gmail.com. Let's submit that. All right, so we went to a process.php and we have nothing, nothing happened. So we need to check our database. And if we go to company and employees, you can see we have Heather Smith design, we have her email. So all that information went into the database. So what's missing here? What's missing is that nothing happens afterwards. We don't get a success message. We don't get anything. So that's the last thing we need to do here. Now, MySQLi has a function that uh, it'll tell us if it'll tell us how many rows have been affected after a query is ran. So that's what we need to use to to do this. So. What we need to do is say, we need to do an if statement, actually an if else statement. 
So we want to say if MySQL I affected rows, and then we need to put in the connection variable there. So we want to say if MySQL I affected rows is greater than zero. So this is saying if the affected rows after this query is greater than zero, which means that something happened, something went into the database, then we want to do something. In this case, we want to display a message. So we'll say we want to echo a paragraph. We'll say employee added. And let's also just make a link to go back. Um, we'll say a href index.php uh, go back. All right, so that's so that's what'll happen if there were rows that were affected. We're just going to get a message saying employee added. If not, if there were no rows affected, then we want to echo out a different message. We want to say employee not added. And we also want to display the MySQL or the SQL error. So we'll say uh, echo MySQL I error. And that takes the connection variable. All right, so let's save that. Let's go back to our form and let's say Harry Johnson department is programming. We'll say hj at gmail.com. All right, so here we click the button. We get an error, unexpected end of file on line 20. And it looks like I have a backwards curly brace. So let's go back and try that again. Okay, our, our form data is already there, so I'm going to click Add Employee. And we get the message Employee Added with a Go Back link. So let's verify that. And you can see we have Harry Johnson. So that's how you can insert data into a database through an HTML form. Um, next, we will be, let me just check what we're doing next. Um, next, we'll be looking at MySQLi uh, in object-orientated fashion. So up till now, we've been using MySQLi um, as procedural programming with functions, um, but you can also use it um, using objects, which is actually the recommended way to use it now. So we'll be getting into that next.